following is an LCTV sports presentation. Lincoln College Basketball on LCTV is made possible by Grau Chevrolet Buick in Lincoln, M.E. Realty, and by the State Bank of Lincoln. Welcome back inside the Jack Dean Nutt Arena where we are set for the game that to us matters the most. Your Lynx finally in action after a long day of basketball here for the AII Men's and Women's Conference Tournament Championships as well. Opening round coming your way right here on LCTV. I'm Nick Jackson bringing it to you live. And we saw in the first game with LCU where they ended up getting the job done over the one seed Washington Advantis by two, 77-75 this time around. We will have the three seed versus the six seed and your Lincoln College Lynx being the three seed taking on Haskell Indians Nations University as the six seed as well. But don't count them out just as of yet. It has been a great, fun, thrilling day of basketball as we've already had the top two seeds in the tournament go down in their first game of the tournament. Now that just leaves one question left and to be answered. It will be answered in about 40 minutes from now as will the Lynx be able to stay and run the table in the tournament now that the top two seeds are out of the way. Washington Adventist, the one seed, lost to LCU. We just mentioned that. And then Voorhees lost to Crowley's Ridge at the end as well. So it should be interesting to see how these two teams fare today. Your Lynx come in 16 and or 17 and 13 on the season. Haskell 16 and 13, riding the five-game winning streak coming into this game, rounding out the regular season. So both teams coming off, or them, they're coming off a big win against uh, or against. The last game of the regular season, and for us, we're coming off a tough loss against Holy Family that snapped our 10-game winning streak to end the regular season. So can the Lynx bounce back? Well, we're going to find out because they're going to have to today because it is do-or-die time here in the Jack D. Nutt Arena. Real quick, though, let's take a look at some of the, the where we got to this point. First, for your Lynx, I just kind of take a, a quick glance around the season, kind of scouted around kind of my thoughts and views. Some big wins for this Lynx team. Uh, the, I think the first win or the first win of the season against Graceland was a big win. I mean, that was an NAIA D1 opponent, and that we really took it to school. Uh, we lost to him already uh, again, but however, though, the first win of the season I think was a big win. Uh, it's always important to get the big first win of the season as well. Also, we beat 13th ranked IU East just over in Indiana at Indiana Wesleyan. That was a big game. We took on and beat 10th ranked IU Kokomo here in the Jack D Nut Arena. We also lost to Kokomo earlier in the season, but we did get a win there. And then we beat Indiana Northwest. We beat Ozarks twice. So, I mean, we had a 10-game winning streak in that span. So, I think the Lynx have done what they need to do to get to this tournament. We also had Trayvon Tyler scoring 2,000 career points. Junior hit 1,000 career points. I mean, we, yes, we had some tough losses, but we also played a lot of tough teams as well. I mean, Winslow Martin is another one that's looking for 1,000 points in his career. Hopefully, he can get it today as well. But, I mean, looking at some of the tough teams, I mean, we had a tough, tough schedule. The month of November was absolutely crazy. Like I mentioned, we had to beat or had to play IU Kokomo, who we beat here in the Jack Dean Arena. Had to play number four ranked Indiana Wesleyan, lost by a couple to them. Had to play six ranked Dakota Wesleyan, lost by six to them. Had to play number four William Penn, who's an NAIA D1, lost to them by a little bit. But we went 12 and three down the stretch in the month of, or in the year of 2020. So this Lynx team is a different ball club than when they started the season as well. We'll get to Haskell throughout the majority of this game as well, but they're riding that, like I mentioned, riding that five-game winning streak coming in to the conference tournament, so they are ready to go. I talked with Coach Downing Jr. just moments ago before tip-off here, and he says they're ready to go. They're looking to, to revenge, I guess, what you would say, that loss last year in the conference tournament in the first opening round where they ended up losing to Indiana Northwest on a buzzer beater. At the last second, they, they dropped it right at the end. And unfortunately for Haskell, they came out on the wrong end of things. So for them, they are looking to avenge that first round loss. And not just by winning the first round, but by winning the entire tournament as well. And with the top two seeds already out, look, anything is possible as your Lynx taking on Haskell. 17-13 and 13 versus 16-13. and 13. We will have that next along with the starting lineups right here on LCT. The 
scan. A simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early. I'm here to save you! But I feel fine. That's great, but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer. Oh man, that's a new fence. If you smoke, early detection could save your life. Learn more at SavedByTheScan.org. 150 over 90. 180 over 111. 160 over 110. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it. Or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. Because of you, I felt hopeless. I know it was a joke, but it still hurt me. Because of you, I felt wanted and not alone in this world. Because you said hi to me on the first day of school, I felt included and I knew that I was going to be okay. Welcome back inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena where we are set to go for the game here of the night. Now, you all have been waiting for your Lynx finally in action after a great day of basketball. Taking on Haskell Indians Nations University. Both teams almost identical records. These two teams have met before as well as your Lynx took that se season series one game to none over a 58-50 win right here in the Jack D. Nutt Arena about a month or so ago. We will see if Haskell can kind of revenge that loss as well. And we mentioned in that game, it was a very defensive-minded game. But tonight, I talked with, like I mentioned, with Coach Downing Jr. He said, look for the offense to be flying. Like I mentioned, last five games, they have been all winners for Haskell. They've averaged 91 points in those ball games. Can they do it again today? They're going to have to offensively because this is a Lynx team that can score with ease as they will win the opening tip. My key factors are keep the intensity level. It has to be there at all times for, the, for this type of game because otherwise it could be do or die situation. Followed by produ uh, productive offensive possessions. A lot of defensive type of games. We already have a foul already going against Haskell in the first 15 seconds of the ball game as that will go on Tristan Kitai, his first team's first as well as he gets the start along with An Anto Antoine Wynn. Brian Elledge, Naka Hendricks, and Xavier Littlehead as well. The Lynx, Romine Wright, or Romine Crumble, Tyler Jr., and Porter in the starting lineup instead of Tyrone Wright for the Lynx as they miss the first bucket of their opening possession. Hendricks now with it. He has it poked away into the hands of Romine. Romine with a good move right there behind the back, but then he'll lose it into the hands of Haskell. Wynn trying to drive in, back out the key tie. Over to Littlehead, who takes a three. Blocked, though, by Romine. Then saved from going out of bounds. It's into the hands of Tyler. Lynx trying to push the pace, but like I mentioned, though, uh, productive offensive possessions. This is going to be a very defensive-minded and battle type of game. You're going to have to be productive on offense. They get it down low to Porter. Spin moves baseline. No, trying to tip him out. Back out, but he could not as it into the hands of Haskell. And then play, every, play as hard as you can every single possession because it is do or die time here in the Jack Dean Nutt Arena as there's going to be a double dribble, a carry going on Elledge. And that'll give the ball right back to this Lynx team. Still no score yet here in the first minute and a half already played. We'll see what happens here. Coach Downing Jr. will have some words to say as they get it down low to Tyler. Tyler working on his man. No, gets his own miss, trying to tip it back in. No, tips it out this time. Into the hands of Porter. It's a fresh 20 here for the Lynx. Porter now with it at the top of the key, gets a screen from Romine. Give and go, trying to slip it into him, but Hendricks says no as he got a hand in the passing lane. Now, Wynn will try to take it, almost lost dribble of it, almost went out of bounds as well. Good defense there by Porter, but the Haskell keeps it alive. Little head now with it at the top of the key to the left wing here for Keith I. Keith I trying to get it down low to Hendricks. He's going to have to be a difference maker today. He's going right at Romine as he can't put it up and in. And still scoreless here. Players to watch for in this game as well. I have Darnell Latham Jr. for the Lynx. He can really score the basketball. But Porter trying to get on the board first. No with the three right there. Montez Crumble with the offensive rebound and put back is in. Montez Crumble showing that the little man on the floor can do it all. 
as he's one of the leading rebounders for this Lynx team, showing you why. Right there, 2-0, Lynx out in front. Here comes Elledge now with it. Skips one into the crowd right there, trying to find win, but throws it right to Coach Lepp, and you can see Lepp fired up already, and Matthew Downing Jr. wants to talk things over a 30-second timeout because he already does not like what he sees from his group of guys. And with that being said, let's take a quick look of how Haskell got to this point in the season. 16 and 13 overall record. They are 8 and 4 in conference play. Again, 16 and 13 was the best record in Haskell Nation's history. They got to the conference tournament for the first time last year, couldn't win. Still looking for that first AII conference win. But this is the most wins that this Haskell team has had in their history. They went 8-4 and four in conference play. They did their part. That was, the, like I mentioned, the most wins that they've had since becoming an AIA program in 20 years. 20 years it has been since they've had 16 wins. So kudos to Haskell for doing all the right steps and pushing all the right buttons as well. They ended their, game, their season on a five-game winning streak, scoring 91 points. They also had some big wins against Wilberforce. They beat LCU, who just took down the one seed. They beat Holy Family, who we lost to. And then they beat Northern New Mexico, as well along with Fisk and in that northern New Mexico game I'm sure that they don't want us to talk about it a little bit it wasn't Haskell's fault by all means but there was there was a brawl in that game made national news and it was an all-out brawl both benches cleared out in public they actually suspended that game with eight minutes left to go and gave the Haskell the win in that ball game I think there was like 11 players suspended for northern New Mexico there was some for Haskell but not indefinitely so, I mean, there's just a lot of ups and downs that Matthew Downing Jr. and his team have gone through adversity, and they still found the way to get here tonight. Can they make it all pay off with a big upset win against this Lynx team? And I asked him about it. I've already seen two upsets. Are we going to see another one today? And he said, no, I don't see this game as an upset. Upset. We have the talent to beat this team. I, I just look at it as another, diff, another game for Haskell. And if they can do that and not, and not play with that pressure, I think they will be just fine. They're going to have to play through Hendricks, who's got the basketball right now, as Eldridge now with it, trying to drive in, stolen away by Porter. Porter with an all-alone fast break. Hendricks trying to catch him, though, however, and then count the basket and the foul. Hendricks didn't mean to foul him, but gave him a little body tap, couldn't slow down in time. The big boy's trying to run the floor like that. It's hard to slow down sometimes. Ran into Porter as he simply went up for the layup and knocked it in. 4 nothing here with an and-one opportunity coming here for Laetuan Porter. And for Porter, averaging just under 10 points a game at 9 points a contest, knocks down the free throw right there, making his 14th start of the season. He's been the, I guess you want to say, six-man-of-the-year mentality here for Coach Lepp's group. But today, getting the start as Wynn going to bring it up the floor. Guarded very closely by Montez Crumble. And now we're going to have a double dribble going against Haskell once again. Thought they were going to call a foul on Crumble. Instead, they called the double dribble, and it's going the other way. So a couple turnovers here early in the ballgame for Haskells. They're going to have to settle down just a bit. Links with the basketball right back. A 5-0 run to begin the ballgame. Can they extend the lead right here? Romine almost threw that one over the head of Porter, but nice high leap there for Porter. Saves it. He's now trying to drive. On Oroke, who just checked in, and he does as he goes baseline and puts it up and in with the finish. This Lynx crowd is loving every minute of this is what we've been waiting for, ladies and gentlemen, all day, all night, to watch this three seed take on the six seed as Hendricks trying to answer from downtown. No. Long rebound into the hands of, I believe, Littlehead, and he thought it was last touched by the Lynx, lets it go out of bounds, and they say it was off of Haskell, so he could have saved it for him, instead lets it go. As they quickly inbound it to Porter, who has a three all alone open. Oroke's with him. Instead, he's going to drive in left side off the lane, blocked by Hendricks. And then we have a foul on the other end of the floor going on Christian Romine. It was just a bad little step, but he stepped on, like, the, the ankle of Wynn, and he fell over, and that's due to a foul. So that'll be his first. Team second here for the Lynx. 7 nothing run in the first four minutes of this ballgame. Haskell. Win or Elledge from downtown. No. Long rebound into the hands of Trayvon Tyler. And this is the Lynx team, like I mentioned, coming off a very tough loss to Holy Family that they led the majority of the game. Just could not get it to go. Tyler with some good dri dribble moves right there as he goes to Crumble. Crumble with the best three-point shooter this Lynx team has. Knocks down the first one. And the Lynx still rolling here early. It's 10-0. And 
Normally this is a very slow starting Lynx team, but hey, you say this is do or die, win or go home, and they are fired up. The ladies play right after us, and they are loving every minute of it right behind this Lynx bench. As Wynn, nowhere to go with the basketball, drives in, makes his, his own lane, and somehow cannot hit. Pulled down by Junior. Outlet now to Tyler. Tyler in transition from downtown. He's got it. Trayvon Tyler once again from downtown. 13-0 Lincoln out in front. And it's another timeout taken here by Haskell. They do not like what they are seeing so far in the first five minutes of this ballgame. This place is going absolutely insane. So am I. This Lynx team rolling here early in the Jack D. Nutt Arena. 13-0 Lynx out in front early in this ballgame. And like I mentioned, this is all due to the fact that Coach Lepp said we had a week off. This is going to be the week that we are going to have to lock in. We, I remember him saying it in shoot-around. He says it in practice. They have to lock in. And so far, they are locking in here tonight. The only question will be, can they hang on? That's the only question and concern that I have. I have done this for five years, ladies and gentlemen, and I am telling you right now that this is a Lynx team that loves to be up by 13, 15, get all our emotions running super high like they are right now, and then about six, seven minutes left to go in the game, I could see Haskell being back in this contest. And like I mentioned in the LCU broadcast, if you were listening, that LCU was down in their first basketball game 20-2 to last year to Indiana Northwest. And that's how, they, that's how the game started on an 18-0 run by Indiana Northwest. It was 20-2, to and then late in that second half, about five minutes to go, I think, they tied it at 79, ended up taking the lead, went up, tied it again at 91, and then lost by five because they couldn't make some free throws down the stretch. But it, anything is possible, and for Haskell, I think that second timeout was used to, hey, guys, let's just settle down. Let's just play our game the way we know how and get an easy bucket right here. I look for them to kind of set something up to get an easy bucket, but Hendricks not looking for the easy shot as he takes one and blocked by Romine. 13-0 run here to begin the game. Trying to make it 16 is Porter. No, almost halfway down. Could not as Hendricks pulls down the board here for Haskell. They're trying to get something at the rim. You need an easy two. I thought Wynn might have just kept going there. Instead, he's going to try to drive in left side as he loses it going up on Junior. Foul was in the act of shooting, so that should send him to the line. And hopefully, for Haskell's sake, he can knock down a pair and get kind of some offense flowing here for Haskell because they need a bucket desperately. Win. Just a 55% free throw shooter, and he misses the first one right there. And you can see, this is where things get interesting. This is where the frustration starts to mount. It's 13-0. You feel like Haskell needs a bucket. Feel like they have to get one here at some point as Kitai will check back in. And I think that's a smart move. He was one of the seniors that talked about this tournament last year. He did not like the fact that Haskell lost on the buzzer beater to Indiana Northwest to win that ball game. He will, he's looking for revenge. No better way to do that than right here taking down the three seed, but they're not making it easy on him as Crumble misses the five-foot jumper from the right elbow. Tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with the Lynx. 13-1 after one of the two made free throws there by Wynn. Gets them on the scoreboard. Lynx looking to answer on the other end. Porter set the throw into Junior. Thought about catching and shooting from the corner instead. Going to set up the offense here with 16 on the shot clock. Now to Porter. Trying to get a down low to Romine, but Hendricks doing a good job here defensively on him. Now to Tyler. Tyler from the right wing from downtown. No. As Oroke pulls down the board here for Haskell. Kitai now with it. Trying to drive in. Instead backs it out to Littlehead. To Oroke in the left side corner. Has it poked away by Porter, but he got a piece of the elbow in, the, in that action. So it'll be a foul on Porter. Hendricks is going to check out of the ball game. I believe that one is Robert Bilelu coming in. I believe I saw Donovan Austin check in as well for Laetuan Porter. Porter kind of slowly making his way to the bench. This is what we were waiting on. They finally inbound it here for Haskell. Now, win with it. He had it almost poked away. Said he regains it. Now sees the lane trying to drive in. Right side lane puts one up off the glass and got the kind of crazy shot to fall for him right there. I think if you ask him, he'll say that it was all skill, and I would have to agree as well. 
10 point lead is that's the first bucket for Haskell here in the first six minutes of the ball game. Junior now with it. Remember this last the last time these two teams met, it was 58-50 in favor of the Lynx. Very defensive type of game. So I wouldn't imagine this game to be any different. Now crumble from the right side corner from downtown. No hits the back of the side of the, the backboard as it's pulled down by Aroke here for Haskell. 13-3 lead Haskell looking for back-to-back -back buckets as Wynn with it. Gets a screen, has it poked away, ball's loose on the floor. He's still got it tied up, and we will have a jump ball. Possession error will stay with Haskell. And I'm a, I'm a little disappointed, too, on Haskell's uniform selection. I really love the teal, the, the bright teal uniforms that they wear, maybe saving them for tomorrow. But Blake Maris will check into the ball game here for the first time, along with, again, Donovan Austin as well. As Crumble and Romine both check out. Tyrone Wright in for his first minutes as well. And after not getting the start here in the AII Conference opening round. That one's stolen off the inbounds by Junior. Outlets now to Tyler. Tyler in transition. No Austin there. And then it is Wright with the right time. Knocks it down. Cleaning up the dirty work there for Tyrone Wright. And I, I actually am a big fan of Tyrone Wright. I believe he's just a sophomore here for Coach Lepp's group. But like I said, I Tyrone is one of those guys that Yes, he's very quiet. Yes, he can not be the most physical, but if you get him, I don't want to say frustrated, but if you get something that aggravates him or kind of gets underneath his skin a little bit, he is a fighter that you do not want to mess with. I mean, the, he can play just about as big as anybody can. When he played against that seven-footer for Indiana Wesleyan and really took him to town on a four- or five-foot height differential, I mean, that was just crazy. I ex respected Tyrone Wright. For every minute of that, he really we needed that, and he stepped up and did and did that for us. So hopefully he can do that in this tournament as well. Junior making Keith die miss as Wright trying to drive into Austin. Austin with a little floater off the glass, no. As and Belalu was the one to pull it down. 15 to three run to begin the ball game, but Wynn trying to cut into it with a three right there, no off the rim, pulled down by Wright. Wright outlets now to Tyler. Tyler with a no-look pass trying to feed it into Austin, but it has it stolen away by Littlehead. Outlet now to win. Trying to give and go coast to coast. is blocked by Wright, and then they're going to call a foul in the act of shooting as Wynn well, had the easy two, but then Wright and Maris both came out of nowhere to kind of slow down the, the fast break. He ends up missing the shot, so he'll go back to the line for two opportunities. And that foul goes on Wright, his first team sixth. Here for the Lynx, already a great defensive team, already 16 fouls. And we haven't even hit the halfway mark yet in this first half as Winslow Martin will check in for the first time. And we haven't seen Winslow Martin in about two or three games, per se. He's sitting on that 1,000 points career. He needs just six points for him. That's just two shots if you ask him. He wears number three for a reason. As he knocks down both, it's back to a 10-point ball game. 15-5. Junior now going to bring it back up the floor. To Maris, to the top of the key in Martin. Martin's going to pull up from way downtown. You knew he was going to at some point, trying to bank that one home. No good. Balls was on the floor as Wright comes up with it. And we're going to have a foul, I believe, going on Oroke. As him and Wright were battling for the loose ball on the floor. It will go on Aroke, his first team's fourth against Haskell as Hendricks checks back in. And Hendricks a, a dominating factor here for Coach Downing's group. Second leading scorer on the team by just two points. Or for the most part, at, both averaging 16 points a game, 16.8, 16.6. As Maris thought about a three from the top of the key. Instead, it goes to Tyler. Skips one across to Junior. Junior catches it right there, but then loses it. And then tries to throw one up. Wasn't paying attention. And it's going to be a shot clock violation going against the Lynx. And that's exactly what I was talking about in my key factors. Play every possession. Know the situation. Know what's going on around you because you can't take these any some of these possessions for granted. Every possession counts. I know they count in the regular season as well, but they count a little bit more. There's a little bit more pressure on them this time around. 15-5 lead after the turnover by the Lynx. On the shot clock violation, Keith I trying to drive in. He falls, and they will say he lost it out of bounds. 
going back the other way. So Haskell could not capitalize after the turnover by the Lynx, which is something that they most desperately need to do. They trail by 10, 15-5 lead with just under 11 minutes to go in this first half. The Lynx started a 13-0 run since then have been quiet a little bit. Bounce pass there from Crumble to Tyler. Tyler trying to get back on the scoreboard. He does as Tyler has his second three of the ball game. And it's now 18-5. Ten and a half minutes still to go. Lynx looking real good here to start this ball game in the first half of the first half. Now will Haskell have an answer for him? They've tried a few times. Just could not get that one to go as Haskell with the basketball. Wynn trying to drive baseline, backs it out though. Nine seconds on the shot clock, drives baseline, met underneath the basket, out to Littlehead, top of the key for three, no, off the side. Ball is tipped around in the hands of Hendricks, goes back up with it, is fouled in the act of shooting as Wright blocked it from behind. 18-5, still the score though, however. And real quick though, we want to give a huge shout out to all the all-Americans for this Lynx team as well. Trayvon Tyler, Montez Crummel, and Darnell Latham Jr. all receiving accolades here or last night at the banquet. Trayvon Tyler, I believe, got Defensive Player of the Year. Junior got first team all-conference along with Trayvon Tyler and Montez Crummel got second team all-conference along with Champions of Character as well so congrats to those three and I believe Hendricks was on the first team ballot as well for Haskell as Martin now with it over to Maris one more pass to the corner and Tyler all alone from downtown no off the back of the rim good look there from Maris to get it to Tyler just couldn't finish as Kitai will finally get it here to LaPointe who just checked in at the last whistle now over to Littlehead Hendricks at the top of the key to Elledge from downtown no too short pulled down by Martin 18-6 lead, nine and a half to go. Martin trying to get it to Maris in the corner. He was set up nicely, but stolen away by Wynn. Or Elledge trying to go coast to coast. No, right with the rebound. Saves it from going out of bounds and gets it to Tyler. Outlet now to Martin. Martin goes to the corner and Crumble wanted to travel. Didn't get it though as he drives baseline. Out to Maris. Maris sets his feet. Catch it, shoot from downtown. And Blake, the bomber Maris with another three right there. 21-6 here as the Lynx rolling early in the Jack D. Nutt Arena. Nine minutes still left to go. Littlehead nowhere to go with the basketball. Great defense by this Lynx team so far. As LaPointe to win. Down low to Hendricks. Working on trying to work the baseline, but has it tipped out of bounds by Montez Crumble. What great defense we are seeing here by this Lynx team so far as Junior will check back in as he'll come in for Winslow. Martin now just a couple points. Still looking for those six points in this ballgame. 21-6 lead. For the Lynx, Haskell has to be frustrated here a little bit as they try to get it down low to Hendricks. Pump fakes, makes right miss, but then he can't finish on the other end. It was a good look. Pump fake and, every, and all, but just couldn't finish. Tyler now with it. Tamaris once again from the corner from downtown. No, halfway down and out, but Wright will tip it out of bounds. It'll go to Haskell. And what was once a, a very hyped up, everybody was excited for this game. I mean, even... Washington Advantis, LCU, everybody you talk to, everybody knows that Haskell, no matter how bad the score or good the score may be, they give 110% every single time on every single possession. As that one thrown away by Littlehead, trying to look for Kitai in the corner, but he moved right as he was getting ready to throw the basketball. Nowhere to be found as he throws it into the, the stands. It's going back the other way. Haskell really just needs to settle down here a little bit and play their brand of basketball. 21-6 lead here for the Lynx. Over to Maris. To Crumble. Almost had that one stolen away by Kitai. Out to Junior. Junior had a three. Instead back to Crumble. Crumble thought about driving baseline. Now double team. Backs it out. 15 on the shot clock here for the Lynx. No hurry. Tyler now with it on the right wing. Guarded by Littlehead. Trying to drive right side lane. Instead backs it out. Takes a step back from the corner. No. Too strong. Pulled down by LaPointe. But he steps on the out of bounds line. And that is a good call right there by the official as he did step on the out-of-bounds line. Matthew Downing Jr. does not like it, but it, unfortunately it was the right call. I saw it up here with my own two eyes. It gives the ball back to the Lynx as they go into Maris. Over to Junior. Junior thought about stepping into a three. He will. He had that look in his eye. No, couldn't get that one to fall, though. 
as Wright almost with an offensive rebound instead back the other way. 21-6, 7.45 still to go in the game. Link's looking real good here defensively and offensively, should I say, as Wynn trying to drive in left side lane. Blocked by Wright inside the paint, says no, sir. And then we're going to have a foul 60 feet away from the basket as I think Wynn's going to pick up a personal on a reach-in call. Trayvon Tyler was trying to say that was a shooting foul, so he shot it from half court, but they're not going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Wynn picks up his first team's fifth here for Haskell. And that's one thing you know, Haskell could do on offense is drive to the lane, into the, the paint. I mean, they just tried it right there and was blocked, but get somebody else to get a little bit bigger, maybe a Hendricks, maybe a Kitai, something like that. I mean, they have the links, they have, they're in the bonus, but they can't get that one to go as Hendricks right there, finally the foul as he blocked Maris inside the paint, and then Maris picks up the foul on the other end, just nowhere to go for him. And see, this is what I'm talking about. Stop the clock, walk all the way down the floor, shoot some free throws. You're not going to get back into this, ball, into this ball game on one possession. And more than likely you're not, not going to get back into this ball game before the half. But there is still 20 minutes left to go besides the seven that we still have in this game. Now, I'm not saying that they can't get close at the end of the half, but that's what you have to do. You have to chip away if you're Haskell. You just have to keep thinking, hey, let's chip away, chip away, chip away. And you can, here's the last defensive block by Hendricks, and then Maris picking up the foul on the other end. You can see that he's pretty frustrated right there as that sent Hendricks to the line as he knocks down the first of the one and one. Romine checked back in as well for, for Maris as Hendricks, just a 69% free throw shooter, made his first. And off on the second one as Crumble pulls down the board as it hit the back of the iron. 21-7 lead here for the Lynx. As Haskell, it has been tough sledding for them to get on the scoreboard here as of late. They kind of go to some sort of zone, which is not good for a great three-point shooting team in the way your Lynx shoot the basketball at 37% on the year from behind the arc. As Crumble goes to right, almost overthrew him. Now right to Tyler. Tyler back out from the left wing this time. No short, long rebound, ran down by Roman. He has it tipped out of bounds. Last touched there by Albert Dean, the sophomore out of Oklahoma. Knocks it out of bounds. So it'll go, it'll stay with the Lynx. 21-7 though, however. Leading the way big time, Tyler throws it into Crumble. Then they'll hand it right back off to Tyler. Tyler back to Crumble, kind of playing catch right now with each other. It's Tyler over to Junior. Junior back to Crumble on the left corner to Romine. Romine with that 10-foot jumper, nice little touch there with the right hand and he got it to go on the baseline. 23-7 and this game is already looking good for the Lynx, but it could get that much better if Christian Romine could get going early. If he can get, have a double-double type ball game, then this is the Lynx team is tough to beat. But Hendricks with a great three-point shot with a hand in his face by Wright to knock down the first three of the game for them. 23-9 to nine now. And like I mentioned, just going to have to do something like that. Chip away, chip away, chip away. We'll see if they can do that as Junior not going to make it easy as he takes a step back jumper, no good short. The mid-range jumper from the baseline, that's kind of his go-to. Shock that he missed that one a little bit. Coming back the other end. 23 to nine, under six minutes to go here in the first half. Hendricks with it to Eldridge. Eldridge sees the lane, trying to drive in. Left side lane, pump fakes, makes right go, leave his feet. No foul called. Hendricks with the offensive rebound, this time going back up with it. And they will say a foul in the act of shooting. So Hendricks is going to walk back to the free throw line to knock, try to knock down a pair again. Hendricks made two already as that will go on Tyrone Wright. Wright will pick up his second personal. Team's ninth here for the Lynx. And I think if you ask Coach Lepp, this is a Lynx team that has not committed this many fouls already this early in the game in a long time. I know this is a Lynx team that prides themselves on being a great defensive mindset, locking down the defenders on the other end. And normally they do that tonight, though. I guess maybe a little nerves flying, kind of grabbing and grabbing and hold a little bit, reach in calls, just a little antsy there in the first couple minutes of this of this game. But both teams look like they've settled down here late in the half. Haskell just trying to find their offense at the moment. Gonna have to get a stop first on the defensive side of things. 23 to 11 as Crumble from downtown, right in front of the Haskell bench, no off the back of the iron, right trying to tip it out, but it, it is into the hands of Junior. Junior picks up his dribble, finds Tyler, back out to Junior. Right inside the 2-3 zone from Romine to Tyler, back to Junior. Junior 
Thought about a step back, instead goes to Tyler. Tyler from downtown, no. Right trying to tip it back in, but instead LaPointe pulls it down. Outlet now here to win. He's trying to drive in on Junior. Kicks it out to the corner, and we will have a, I believe he stepped out of bounds on the baseline, so I'll give the ball back to the Lynx. There's a good look right there. That was actually Elledge who drove and then kicked it out to win in the corner, but it didn't matter, though, because of the fact that they stepped out of bounds on the baseline. So Haskell really shooting themselves so far here in the foot early. See if maybe halftime they can correct that. It's give and go there with Romine cutting towards the basket. It was going to be a two-handed slam and a good find there from Crumble, but he could not do it, and it's going to be a turnover as it's going to be a timeout taken here by Coach Lepp's group. 30-second timeout as he they lead the way by 12, 23 to 11 here with four minutes left to go in half number one. We'll see if the Lynx can hang on. You guys are watching Lincoln College Basketball right here on LCTV. Many, many years ago, Grouse Chevrolet Buick in Lincoln realized that what sets it apart are the people here to help you through the purchase process and help with service after the sale. Employees with 20, 30, even 40 years of service. Here to serve you and your automotive needs before, during, and after the sale. We're proud of who we have in your corner. Grouse Chevrolet Buick in Lincoln, serving Lincoln and Logan County for more than 65 years. ME Realty in Lincoln brings home buyers and sellers together in Logan County and the surrounding area. ME Realty is now at a new location at 602 Keokuk in Lincoln. Call them at 217-735-5424 or online at SethSellsLincoln.com. See all of their latest home listings at any time. ME Realty, proud to be involved in the Lincoln community. Welcome back inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena where Haskell missed their last opportunity coming out of the timeout. And then the Lynx capitalized on the other end with a made bucket there by Montez Crumble. 25-11 is that one thrown into the backcourt trying to be saved from going out of bounds by Tyrone Wright. Instead, it will be Haskell basketball. They will say, I believe, should be a fresh shot clock. They will say same possession. So they're not going to reset the shot clock. Still 17 seconds left to go on the shot clock here for this possession. 25-11 with four minutes to go. Haskell starting to little, find a little bit offensively, but not that much. They're going to have to find a little bit more here in this one. Has little head with it now, trying to drive in. Dishes it off to Hendricks. Hendricks with the two-hand slam, but couldn't finish underneath. Outlet now from Crumble to Tyler. Tyler trying to go right at the rim. No, but we have a late whistle as... Tyler will be fouled in the anchor shooting on Elledge. And not looked like not a lot of contact there. The official on the baseline didn't blow the whistle. It was the one running the floor from afar that blew it. That sends Tyler to the line. Four two shots. Was going to be an, an easy two either way. Question is, make him earn it from the free throw line. And that's something Tyler Skriptonite has been all year four years that he's been here, but I, actually though, for Trayvon, in that last game, he did make nine of 10 from the line. So if that's his only miss, I would take it. As he <laughs> misses that one too, you can blame me for that one. Uh, broadcaster's curse right there. I basically said that he was gonna make it and he didn't. 25-11, 3.45 to go. Elledge now with it. Elledge getting a little bit of uh, Stuff said to him from the crowd here. The, the Lynx fans and students are enjoying what they're seeing here so far, trying to help the team out as much as they can. But Aroke from the corner, no good. Hendricks with the offensive board. Back out to Littlehead. Now Win with it. Win at the top of the key, 13 on the shot clock, trying to drive in on Junior left side. Instead goes to Aroke in the left side corner. Back out to Littlehead, but I think it was caught by Win. Now Littlehead has got it with six seconds, but has it poked away into the hands of Montez Crumble. It's a three on one fast break. He gives it off to Junior, and Junior simply lays it up and in. Junior on the board finally here, as that's what they needed to get him going as well. 27 to 11 with under three to go here in the first half. It's been all links so far as Elledge from the top of the key. No good right, or Romine with a big board right there as Tyler now to Junior. One more time from the corner, no. That's usually when Junior starts to get hot right there. Couldn't get that one to fall. Still 27 to 11, Elledge now with it. To the top of the key in Littlehead. Swinging it around the perimeter now for win. Back to Littlehead. Thought about Eldridge. Instead, bounce pass one to Hendricks. 
Now Elledge will have it. Wants a screen from Hendricks. Goes to the corner, and Oroke, who couldn't handle it, now has it poked and out of his hands, and in the hands of Trayvon Tyler. The Link's going to slow the pace down here just a little bit, but they are going to have to get across half court as they're not really paying attention. And that was awfully close right there to the 10-second call, about a nine and a half, if you would ask me. Too close for comfort for the Lynx, in my opinion. As Junior trying to get a down low to Romine, but we're going to have a foul before the travel. Let's see who that one will go on. I believe Hendricks will pick that one up, so that's his second. So the Lynx have done a, a nice job on that side of things of getting Hendricks out of the game with two personals already. Really about the only size that they have that can co compare with Romine or maybe Tyrone Wright as we're still, I guess, waiting. Blake Maris checks back in for Montez Crumble as Romine at the line for a one and one. And Romine cannot hit the first one. And it's going back the other way as Aroke pulls down the board. Don't forget, we will talk with Coach McGee at the half along with, again, the, the head or assistant coach here for Haskell as well, whether it be Downing Jr. or Brown, as Kitai trying to go to the corner here for Oroke. Oroke now with it, backs it out, 27 to 11. Kitai with it, hasn't really shot the basketball all day, takes his one of his first attempts right there, that one no good, 27-11 still as we're going back the opposite direction. Tyler picks up his dribble, now to Maris in the right side corner. Junior with it, minute 30 here. As now Tyler to Junior now on the right side corner, or wing, he'll take a three, no good. As Wynn pulls down the board here for Haskell. As now Wynn trying to bring it back up the floor, but Tyler says otherwise. As he goes to Elledge, now to Littlehead. To in the corner for Oroke, but he's blocked by Romine. Tyler now gonna bring it back up the floor, under a minute to play here in the first half. 27 to 11 lead. That was once a 13-0 run to begin the ball game by the Lynx. Since then have cooled off, but the defensive part has not. Now right with it. He has it poked away by Kitai, but he's trying to save it from going out of bounds. He could not. Almost hopped the scores table. Hopefully Miss Bowers is okay over there. As here comes LaPointe back in for Haskell. He'll get Kitai. 43 seconds left to go. Shot clock at 11. Here for the Lynx. Could possibly be a two for one if they go quick enough. Back to Junior. Thought about going to right and said he's gonna step into a three and he's got it. Darnell Latham Jr. with a big three right there as he keeps this game going for the Lynx. And finally over the 30 point mark that I thought we were gonna hit with like 15 minutes to go in the first half. Is now right reading the pass all the way. Steals that one. Shot clock and gate clock separated by about two seconds or so as he throws that one into the hands of Junior. Now actually shot clock turned off. Junior from the left elbow's got it again. Junior very streaky as when he gets going, he's tough to stop. 32-11 here with 10 seconds to go. Again, don't forget, we'll talk with both coaches at the break. Make sure you tune in for that as well. Now to four seconds. LaPointe from downtown. He's got another. I think that's just the second three here by Haskell made in the ball game, and it is as we will take a quick break here as we are at the half. 32-14 lead. Don't go anywhere. We'll see what the coaches have in store for us when we come back on LCTV. M.E. Realty in Lincoln brings home buyers and sellers together in Logan County and the surrounding area. M.E. Realty is now at a new location at 602 Keokuk in Lincoln. Call them at 217-735-5424 or online at SethSellsLincoln.com. See all of their latest home listings at any time. M.E. Realty, proud to be involved in the Lincoln community. responsibility oh it's huge i know it's huge yeah, and the salary oh my god yes right? i mean like i was literally i was about to move in with my parents and <laughs> right before the yeah so this saved me i i really believe in you you know thank you it's nice to hear that from someone <laughs> these are cool did you um 
خودت Welcome back inside the Jack Dean Nutt Arena. I'm here with head coach Pat Lepper. Again, coach, what a great first half offensively for you guys and defensively as well. Again, you guys started the game on a 13-0 run. Talk to me a little bit about the mindset going into this game. We're coming off a very tough loss. I knew it was a do-or-die type of game. How do, you, how do you get your guys to respond in a, a do-or-die game like this? Well, I think that our last regular season game, uh, we've got humbled. Uh, the team outplayed us. And so this week in practice, we, we, we recognize the stakes of the tournament game, but also the importance of us picking up our intensity and playing uh, harder. And I think on the defensive end, we did that uh, the first half. No, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. Again, the last time these two teams met, it was a very defensive battle type of game, 58-50. Seems like we're going to have a little bit more scoring offense here this time around. You guys cooled down a little bit. What can you take into the second half that you did well, and maybe what can you improve on to kind of fix some and tweak some things there for the second half? I think we got to stay out of foul trouble. I mean, it was 9-5, to five and, and uh, you know, we got in foul trouble, which got them to the free throw line so they could kind of make some shots and get a little bit of rhythm. But they only scored 14 points, so I got to be grateful for that. But we got to do a better job of, of moving the ball and then really executing when we call something. No, I couldn't agree with you more. Again, your team leads 32-14 at the break. Thank you so much, Coach. And it is great to see Coach Lepper here standing in front of us. Usually we have McGee, but today it's a special treat for a very special day. His team leads 32-14 here at the break. We'll have more Lincoln College basketball coming your way for the second half next on LCTV. scan a simple procedure whose mission is to detect lung cancer early i'm here to save you but i feel fine that's great but you may still be at high risk for lung cancer oh man that's a new fence if you smoke early detection could save your life learn more at savedbythescan.org We're back inside the Jack Dean Arena. We just heard from Coach Lepp. Now I'm standing here with the head coach of Haskell as well, Matthew Downing Jr. Again, thank you so much for taking the time for one is one thing. I know your team, you find yourself trailing on the scoreboard, but we know this game is far from over, and I told you I was going to have a stat for you, yep. and here it is. Last time, LCU was in this same situation. They were down 20-2 to two to start the ball game, came back, tied the game late, and ended up going into overtime in their first round against Indiana Northwest last year. How can you take some of that positivity and what you saw in the first half and say, hey, guys, this game's far from over? Yeah, we just need to settle down. I think um, we're getting pushed out offensively. I think if we can get just get deeper with the ball, take care of it, and finish at the rim. You know, we're getting good looks at times. So when we do get them, we just need to convert. It's a lot of time left, so we just need to figure out a way to um, – like I said, get some paint touches and get some easy baskets. No, I, I couldn't agree with you more on that one. What is something that you kind of saw that you did well in that first half? Like you mentioned, you just didn't make some shots down the stretch. But what was something that you kind of can take from that first half, something positive, and kind of build on that for the second as well? Well, the fact that I only scored 32 points, I mean, I would live with that if we were scoring the ball. So I think when we went to our zone, it, it didn't give them any trouble, but it gave us a little, a little break to where we can kind of gather ourselves and, and get back in the game a little bit. And I know, I know you can't hear it because you're uh, too busy down here coaching, mm -hmm. but I said, you know, you just have to chip away at this oh, lead. Yeah. Just chip away. There's still plenty of time oh, left. Yeah. Is that what you're going to go tell your guys in the locker room? Yeah. Because like you mentioned at the start of this game when I talked to you before the game started, mm -hmm. you said it's not an underdog mentality. We're here to win. Exactly. It's not a, there's not a 20-point play in the game. So we just got to try to get it out to 10 by the 10-minute mark and just keep, keep gnawing at it until we get there. No, I think I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you so much, Coach, right, for you. taking the time as well. Again, we're going to take a 30-second break, and then we'll be back with Bill Gossick as well here as the halftime interview unfolds. 32-14 lead here for the Lynx at the break. Don't go anywhere. More action coming your way on LCTV. The State Bank of Lincoln is Lincoln's oldest bank. Its home location at 508 Broadway dates back over 100 years. That's 100 years of providing Lincoln and surrounding area residents and businesses with banking services including savings and checking accounts, personal business and agricultural loans, and retirement planning. The State Bank of Lincoln, since 1903, assisting and strengthening both individuals and the local community. 
We're back live inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena. I'm here with Bill Gossick, who is not only an alumni of Lincoln College, a proud supporter of Lincoln College, but I believe you've, you've gone to school here a time or two before, right? Yes, my, uh, our experience with Lincoln College started with my father. He was the class of 1919. So we go back a long ways. And we put, well, I'll put a disclaimer in here that Lincoln College has caused my blood to become purple rather than red. So no, no I, 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 I've served as a, I'm now a trustee emeritus, so I'm still hanging in here. Well, we appreciate everything that you've done for, for this college. Now, talk to me a little bit about it. You were in the radio business for a long time here. I know you support WLNX and LCTV as well. Talk to me a little bit about kind of your history and in radio. Well, first I want to congratulate three young fellows, including Nick here. They won a national award and get to go to the Big Apple. And we're proud of you. Uh, that's a, a broadcasting award which you've earned, and we're really proud of you. Well, I'm still in broadcasting, uh, Nick. Uh, I do two radio shows a week on WLCN, our local radio station here up in Atlanta. We do a talk show each Wednesday morning, and then on Sunday mornings I do a big band and jazz show. So I'm still in radio. No, that, that's that's very impressive, especially for a guy your age. You don't look a day under 25. I mean, come on now. I mean, you are looking great for your age as well. Now, I don't know if you remember this or not. I certainly do, but it was a long, long time ago. Actually, I think my freshman year here, we actually did a morning show together. It was you, me, Blake Haas, Dylan Deemer. You actually was our special guest on that show. I recall that, sir. I, I, I now recall it. At 96, you don't recall a lot of things, but I sure do remember that. Yes, I do, Nick. Well, I don't think it's just 96. I forget a lot, and I'm only 23, so <laughs> don't feel too bad about that one. But I remember that show like it was yesterday. I know you came in, and, and then you actually invited us to come to see your show in your yeah. place over in Atlanta. Yeah, it's a pretty quaint place up there. Uh, but uh, we get along very well. We've had a great station manager, uh, Jim Ash, up there, a producer, engineer, uh, everything but the janitor. So it's a great station. Well, now let's switch back over to Lincoln College here yeah. for a second. You've been to a lot of Lincoln College basketball games, especially when you've been your time here at the college and this season as well. What have you seen from Coach Lepp's group? I mean, it seems like they're a really good group of guys, a lot of hit and miss. But what's your thoughts out on the floor from sitting in the stands? I'll tell you one thing. If I had a young man playing basketball, I'd be delighted if he were being coached by Pat Lepper. Not because Mr. Lepper, Coach Lepper, is a, is a good coach, but more and more importantly, he's a gentleman. And I'd be very happy to have my kid under his tutelage. Now, I couldn't agree with you more. Now, speaking of kids, he has recently had a few. Is that a couple well, a couple kids as well? What Any advice for him on, you know, kind of parenting issues? Because we've talked this time or time on a couple bus rides, and sometimes it doesn't know if he knows what he's doing. He kind of leaves it up to his wife. Well, there again, there's a lady with a lot of smarts and very, very native intelligent. Oh, uh, I, that's a great family, and we're happy to have them on this campus. We're, we're lucky to have them on this campus. I used to take bus rides when I was a manager here. Uh, in my uh, year at Lincoln College, I was Coach Bailoff's manager, and we had an old Diamond Rio bus from the, what was known as the Odd Fellows Home. And uh, it had a luggage rack above the seats, and on the way home, I'd climb up on the luggage rack and take a nap. <laughs> really? You would take a nap? Yes, yes. I'd, well, go to sleep on the way home. I'd more than take a nap. I'd sleep the way home. I, I couldn't agree with you there on this one. One other thing for you here. I know you, you like to sit in the stands and stuff, but how is this view right here? We're sitting in Coach Lepp's seat right now on the floor. I think I think this is the better view than, in, than it is maybe up in the press box, huh? Yes, but I'm lucky. I've been coming here for years up here, and uh, I sit about the same seats up there, and uh, you get a good view. Uh, right here, you get the coach's view up nice and tight. Anyway, uh, I'm delighted to come to these games because we have a great bunch of students, and I always try to interact with our students, and I ask people like you, are you having a good time here? Are you getting along all right? And that's important to me to know. No, and from our side of things, it's important to us as well. Feel makes us feel like we're appreciated. Some of these kids come from all over the country, maybe even from out of the country as well, from some of our soccer players. It's just making them feel here at home, and I think Lincoln College does a great job of that. Can you add anything to that? I'm very proud to be a part of Lincoln College in any capacity, even the janitor. Uh, which is a good capacity, by the way. We need good janitors. But uh, it's, it's a joy for me to be associated with Lincoln College. And my wife, too. She bleeds as much purple as I do. Well, we appreciate every, appreciate every minute of it. You a trustee as well. There's a lot of things that you give to this, this college that we are really appreciative 
appreciate of, and I know as I speak for everybody in the entire LC student body base as well, we thank you for everything that you've done here and continuing to support us and Lincoln College as a whole as well. Thank you, son, and a tip of my hat to Dr. Gerlach and the entire college staff here. They are invested in our kids. We do a great job, and I'm proud to be a part of Lincoln College. Right, well said, sir. And once again, congrats, uh, Dr. David Gerlach, the president here at Lincoln College, as Bill Gossett was referred to. But thank you so much for taking the time you, coming down here. Again, at your age, it's tough sometimes to get up and down those steps, so we really appreciate it. What we really steps? do. What steps? Yeah, right, what steps, I know. 32-14 lead here for the Lynx at the break. We will get set to go for the second half here in a must-win ball game for Coach Leb's group when we come back right here on LCTV. Good job, son. Since I was young, my friends told me and my coaches that I'd be a good coach someday. It was my senior year and it was crunch time. And Lincoln College with a sports management degree and it just like something clicked. I've just always had a, a passion for sports. There's a lot of opportunities out there within sports management. It's for anybody that has a love of sport in general and uh, also from the standpoint of administration. Uh, but more importantly, just the love of the game and also the opportunity to work with others. The opportunities that they get at Lincoln College, they won't find as many other places from the, you know, having the opportunity to get hands-on experience you know, throughout the college itself as we transition to four-year athletics and in our community. I coached a summer travel baseball team for three years, which I'm now the president of. So the goal is to be an athletic director. They organize schedules. They work with coaches. Um, there's an athletic director at all levels, uh, junior high, recreational programs, high school, college. The types of jobs available to our students when they graduate here cover the whole sport arena from youth sports all the way up to professional sports. Uh, and there's a lot of different disciplines that you could find yourself working in also. I've helped with college, high, higher education, I've helped with high school and junior high, and all those experiences helped me uh, get the positions that I, I'm able to get now, even before graduating uh, college. Day after day I learned something that I could use when we're in a board meeting or um, for a parent meeting or our uh, flyers for tryouts, stuff like that. Just all the classes that I've had, I never felt like I didn't learn something that would help out with where I'm at now as the president or being the head coach of other schools in town. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly I found my voice and learned all the ways I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena where we have concluded three interviews at the halftime. I think that's a, a first here at Lincoln College as well. We've done two, but never three, and never two with, the, with two different coaches before like that as well. So that was a good, I guess I should say, a good interview as the Lynx will have the first possession here to start the, the second half. Romine can't get the five-footer to fall, and it's still a 32-14 lead at the break. And also we want to thank Coach... Matthew Downing Jr. as well for taking the time. Again, we asked him, we told him you didn't have to, but he, he chose to come back and, and take the time for us as well. So we do appreciate that for Haskell showing good sportsmanship. And he had a lot of good insights to say as well. As Littlehead from the corner from downtown, no too strong. As it's pulled down by Porter. Porter with an outlet pass now to Darnell Latham Jr. Jr. almost trapped on the baseline, or on the corner, but that one's tipped out of bounds by Keita. It'll stay right here. And we have, I believe, some more fans piling into the stands. Getting set to go. We still have about three or four more games left to play. Have the Lady Lynx taking on 
Voorhees as Crumble blocked by Hendricks. Gets his own miss, trying to go back up with the floater. No, nice box out there by Littlehead to box out Romine. So he can't get the offensive board. And here comes Wynn back the other way to Kitai now with it. Kitai going to pull up from downtown. Porter gave him the opportunity. He misses. Almost a good look there from Kita. He can make you pay as that one's saved from going out of bounds by Crumble into the hands of Trayvon Tyler. It's a three-on-one fast break. Tyler going to go coast to coast and lays it up himself. Now, again, we didn't have time to kind of recap some of the stats here for you, so we'll get, do it as we go. Leading the way here for Hendrick, or for Haskell was Hendricks with six points on the night, followed by him was Elledge with four. Now we're going to have a foul going against the Lynx and Montez Crumble on a reach-in call. For Lincoln, though, however, there was two tied with seven. It was Montez Crumble and then Darnell Latham Jr., both with seven apiece. Link's doing good offensively. Tyler has six and Porter with five. So very well-rounded scoring here for this Lynx team as Hendricks trying to go to work on Romine. They thought about the pump fake. Instead, kicks it out to Kitai for a long three. Good look, but can't get that one to fall. However, though, I mentioned in the... Haskell just one for 13 from the three-point line. I thought Hendricks had one as they're going to get an easy open layup here by Elledge, who simply lays it in. As again, though, but I thought Hendricks must have made a three. They said it was a long two. So the only three made was LaPointe there at the end of the half. 0 for 13 other than until that one. He knocks down, or 0 for 12, excuse me, until that last one. So they shot 7% from the three-point line. And like you, you heard Coach, Coach Downing Jr. say, we're only, I mean, to be, give only give up 32 points is something that we can, is something that we can improve on and, and look forward to because of the fact that that 13-0 run in the first two minutes of the big games seemed like it was going to be a very high scoring battle since then though. And he basically said the same thing I've been telling you, just chip away here and there. Is Romine gonna try to answer from downtown? No, off the back of the rim. It was a good look. Romine can make that three-point shot. But this time, could not get that one to go. Kitai trying to drive in instead goes to win. Now a little head over to Elledge, looking to just chip away here on the scoreboard. Elledge almost with the push off there on Montez Crumble. Now has to back it out, takes a step back three over Crumble and knocks it down. Elledge with a good look from the crowd right there. The crowd that was kind of chirping at him a little bit since then stands up, starts clapping for him, showing the signs of respect here from the LC College students as Lace Juan Porter dishes it down low to Romine. No, but he is fouled in the act of shooting because otherwise that would have been an easy two-handed slam for Romine. You can see he's frustrated on that one. I think Hendricks is going to pick that one up and that's big for the Lynx as that could be and will be Hendricks' third personal. Nothing to worry about yet for Haskell but he's the only size they really have besides their assistant coach uh, Malake Brown. I'm sure I didn't say that right. They told me once already I, I did forget uh, I did say Mike the first time, and they, but other than that, it is Coach Brown. We will go with that. One of two from the line goes Romine. 35-19 lead for your Lynx. See if they can get things going, but I know Coach Brown, the assistant coach for Haskell, knows everything about uh, in, inside the paint and working his feet and making his body move. His little head with a way off on that jumper right there. Didn't even come close to hitting the rim. But I know when we played Haskell, Last year, this is the Lynx team that was probably better than last year, or better last year than maybe they were this year, but a lot of the same talent as well as Porter finishes on the other end. And for, for them, Mike Brown really took it to Julian Powell. Julian Powell has now signed a G League contract and is playing in the G League. And Mike Brown, assistant coach here for Downing Juniors, they get on the board right there, but on a quick pass to Junior to step into a three in transition, no good as Porter couldn't pull down the board. So you know that not only Coach Haskell, but or for the coaches for Haskell, they know what they're doing when they're talking about it. Hendricks with a great defensive player underneath the paint, inside the paint, took, misses the three right there as it's going back the other way. 37-21. Trying to slowly crawl their way back into this basketball game, and Haskell is, but they're going to have to get a stop on the defensive side of things, which is something they haven't been able to do quite often. Tyler now trying to drive in, but Wynn going to be called for the foul as Littlehead and Wynn both trying to say, hey, he's using that arm bar, which we know Trayvon Tyler is notorious for doing. However, though, not called against him this time around. They go to Junior. Now to Porter. 
Back to Junior, to Tyler once more. Junior once again, 10 seconds now on the shot clock. Porter with it at the top of the key. Goes to Junior on, or to Tyler on the left side. Down low to Romine, trying to slam one home. No, but we have a foul, a late foul, going against Romine. Or not against Romine, but for Romine. As I believe that's going to go on Hendricks, his fourth. So now Hendricks in a little bit of foul trouble as well. The big man's got four personals. And we still have 15 minutes to go left in the game. Romine does knock down the first one right there. Win was about to check out. Instead, LaPointe comes in for Hendricks. Cannot afford him to pick up a fifth foul this early in the second half. Now we're kind of getting set to go here. Still kind of waiting as well. I believe Win actually did come out. As Hermany Horses, the junior out of Denver, Colorado, checked in. Haven't seen him much in this ball game, but he did play. He actually started the last time these two teams met. So interesting choice there that they're not going, going to him off, going to him off the bench instead of uh, being in the starting role. Lapointe now with it to Littlehead. Littlehead trying to skip one over to Keith. I almost threw it over his head. Bounce pass one to Hermany Horses. Now another bounce pass to Lapointe, but it's tipped by Littlehead. And Keitai trying to save it from going out of bounds. It looked like it was a, a backcourt violation as Littlehead was the one that tipped it into the backcourt, but they don't call it. Now Hermione or, or Titai has to make a three. No good. Pulled down by this Lynx squad. Crumble now to Junior. Junior back out to Tyler, and they're going to slow the offense down here for Coach Lepp's group. And like I mentioned, I think Lepp coming back out after that, after that interview where Coach Lepp decided to do the halftime interview with us instead of Coach McGee. So... It was great to see Coach Lepp finally get a piece of the action as well. And Junior trying to give down low to Crumble right through the contact and puts it almost up and in. Instead, going to the line for two shots. And the Lynx kind of seem like their, their game plan has changed just a little bit. This time, instead of settling for some open shots and taking what the, what the defense is giving to you in that 2-3 zone, they're driving to the rack and drawing some, some contact and some fouls. As that one goes on Littlehead, his first, team's fifth already here in the first five minutes of the second half as Crumble misses the first. Almost got another one to go. And that one hits the front of the rim and bounces to the right as well. Nowhere to be found is the back of the net, that's for sure. 31, or 39-21. So the Lynx offensively kind of Sluggish just a little bit as we're going to have a blocking foul there going on Montez Crumble. Crumble tried to run in there and take the charge. He looked to be outside of the restricted area, but I don't think his feet were set either way. No, no argument by Crumble. So that'll put Littlehead at the line. As he knocks down the first one right there. Looking at some of these things, though, Haskell is the fourth best scoring team in this tournament as they do not allow very many points. Again, averaging, just giving up averaging, allowing 74 points a game as we're going to have a, somebody stepped out of bounds on the baseline. I believe that's Trayvon Tyler. Coach Lepp was trying to say it was a cylinder call, but nothing was called. That sparks a little bit of life there for Haskell. And for your links, though, however, Darnell Latham Jr., top of that list, comes in fifth in scoring per game, averaging 18.4 points a game, just behind Xavier Sewell. But for Haskell, though, however, no, no one really on that list. But as a team, though, they, they do well, especially when it comes to field goal defense percentage. So holding teams to just about 42% in ball games and Fisher is first at 40 percent followed by Northern New Mexico and then Haskell and Link's not on that list and now we're gonna have a foul going against Trayvon Tyler going the other way so Link's kind of slow and staggered offensively here a little bit but still able to do their part 39-23 as they're keeping Haskell in the game but also at the same time Defensively still locking down enough to not to slowly let them back in the game, not necessarily letting them back in all at once as Hermione Horses is going to be 
Called for the traveling violation right there. Kind of lost his balance as he was going up for that shot. They called the travel. He's going back the opposite direction. 39, 23, 13 and a half minutes still left to go as Ozarks and looks like Fisher getting set for their game that's coming up after this one. As Tyler now trying to drive in right side lane up and under move. No, Porter is there. And we're going to have an over the back call on Laytuan Porter. Porter was trying to get the offensive rebound but could not. Ends up going over the back of LaPointe, and he comes up grimacing just a little bit. Hopefully he's okay. <laughs> Romine was at the trainer getting something worked on, maybe some blood or something. It's a little more noticeable from with white jerseys, that's for sure. But LaPointe holding that left eye. Looks to be okay walking back down the floor. Going to stay in the ball game. But we all know the, the hardwood does not give. And I think LaPointe just found that one out. 39-23 lead for the Lynx as Elledge goes right past Junior but can't finish on the other end as Donovan Austin pulls down the board as he just checked into the ballgame along with Blake Maris. Now Crummel trying to drive in and count the basket and the foul as they say it was in the act of shooting. Montez Crummel able to maintain his balance just enough to get the shot off and then makes it on the other end. What a play there from Montez Crummel. Montez did exactly what he needed to do, trying to just drive right to the rim and end up drawing some contact and then got lucky on the other side of things and then rattles home the free throw to for make it an and one opportunity. And all of a sudden, it's a 19 point game. 42 23 with 13 minutes to go. Haskell needs to work quickly. Hermony Horse is now with it. Trying to drive in on Blake Maris, but has it poked away by Donovan Austin. Here come the links on the fast break. Two on two. Austin going right at LaPointe, and he is going to draw a foul in the act of shooting and Haskell is not something you want to see here as well. Tough to stop this Lynx team alone. And then you, on top of it, you add Hendricks on the bench with four fouls. All he can do is watch for now. Austin at the line. That does go on LaPointe, his first team seventh here in the half. Still 12.49 left to go in the game. Link's already in the bonus. Austin makes his first, makes it a 20-point game. Second one as well in it, and it's a 21-point lead here for the Lynx. We talked about it. You heard Coach Lepp say it as well. The intensity had to be there, and so far it has shown up here today. Lynx now your new number one overall seed after... Washington Adventist and Voorhees both losing today. This was a big game for the Lynx. Everybody was worried about, well, will there be a third upset? Third time's a charm. Lynx say not exactly as Junior almost tried to take the, make the three from the right side corner. Now that one will be thrown back in, out, lost it out of bounds. It'll go back to Haskell, 44-23 with 12 and a half minutes still to go. And both teams in attendance here trying to watch this game because now they all know that this, this very well could be a, a championship fight and a team that we're witnessing right here could come to the national or to the conference title game. We'll have to await the winner here and in the game behind us. As Elledge knocks down the first one right there. So it's still a 20-point game. Here, I'm going to pull up the conference schedule. As he knocks down a, another one as well, 44-25 now. Two over two from the line goes Elledge, and it's going back the other way. 12 minutes still left to go in this game. Link's looking good offensively and defensively. Can they keep it up, though? That's the real question, Tyler to Porter, down low, working on the left side of the box, inside the paint. Back out to Junior at the top of the key now. Junior with 10 seconds on the shot clock, trying to size up her many horses, instead has it poked away, and we're gonna have a foul going against Haskell, and it seems like there's a foul called almost every time down the floor, because Haskell just does not have the size and, and the advantage to keep up with this Lynx team. I know the Lynx are or 17 and 13, but this is a team that is very, very good when they want to be. That's the question. When they want to be is the thing. 
44-25, under 12 minutes to go. Sorry, something just made me laugh. I had to catch my breath for a second. As Winslow Martin in as now Kitai traveled with it right there. And he doesn't agree, but Coach Downing Jr., he saw, he saw the same thing the officials did, and he just sometimes you have to let some of those things go like that. That's the only thing a coach can do sometimes. You can tell him the game plan. You can help him execute the game plan, but you can't go out there and play for him. That's the only bad part as a coach. You have to sit there and watch. Win or lose, all you can do is watch from the bench. And that's sometimes what coaches have to do these days is Martin with it over to Austin. Austin now trying to drive in. Has it poked away by Elledge, and it's picked up by LaPointe. Thought about a fast break opportunity. Instead, bounce pass is one to Elledge. But good defense there by Austin. And now we're going to have a foul going against Austin on Elledge, on reach in. It was a step back by Elledge they made. It's not going to count. That would have been a, a helpful three points there for Haskell. Instead, comes up short. They're going to have to inbound. 44, 25, 11 minutes still to go as Haskell with the basketball, but trailing your links. Elledge, this time going to try to take a step back three. This one no good as Kitai goes aggressively flying it in to get that offensive rebound and then throws it off a junior to keep the possession alive. Good save there from Kitai. And like I mentioned, this is a Haskell team that they do not quit. They are very aggressive. They will continue to play hard this entire ball game. So just because it's a 20-point lead right now with 10 minutes to go, or with 11 minutes to go, they will find a way to come back if they can. Going to need some threes and some help. They only were only one of 13 from behind the arc, but in the first half, we'll see if they can make it a little bit better in the second half. They kick it out to Kitai from downtown. No way off on that one. Porter with the board. Now trying to inbound it to Junior. Junior trying to tip it to himself. Instead, it comes up in the hands of Kitai. Over to LaPointe, who had the only three in the first half. Knocks down the first one here in the second half as well. 44-28, 10 and a half minutes still to go. Signs of life here for Haskell as we're going to take a timeout. And we'll be right back here inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena where your Lynx leading the way in their first game of the AI Conference Tournament. 44-28 right here on LCTV. Many, many years ago, Grouse Chevrolet Buick in Lincoln realized that what sets it apart are the people here to help you through the purchase process and help with service after the sale. Employees with 20, 30, even 40 years of service. Here to serve you and your automotive needs before, during, and after the sale. We're proud of who we have in your corner. Grouse Chevrolet Buick in Lincoln, serving Lincoln and Logan County for more than 65 years. We're back inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena where we are getting set to go for what has been a great game by your Lincoln College Lynx so far this, this year. And like I mentioned, we knew that this team was capable of it on all sides of the floor. But unfortunately, a lot of things have not gone our way. Some things have had some bad breaks. We've had some miscues. We've, you know, we've had it almost, we've had it all. Let's just put it that way. We've had it all. And seems like we're clicking at the right time. Ten game winning streak before you heard Coach Lepp say we lost it at the end. Got outplayed by Holy Family. And I think, I mean, yeah, we got outplayed. But I think that was just because of the fact that it was the last game of the season. Didn't mean anything. You know, I'm just trying to have some fun. Play aggressive. Conference seating was already in the books. Nothing, win or lose, it wasn't going to change it. And it just seems like they, they played a little too carelessly sometimes. Romine couldn't hit the free throw, 44-28. As the coach left, starting to get a little frustrated here on the defensive side of things. You don't want to get want them to get lackadaisical and think this game is over by all means. You want them to stay the course and try to, I know it for Haskell fans, it's not what you want to hear. As Keithai from way downtown knocks down a big three right there from NBA range to keep their hopes alive. 44-31. But like I said, you know, for... You don't want to hear it as a Haskell fan, but for the Lynx, you have to keep the gas down, the gas pedal down. If you do not, this Haskell team will come back and beat you as they throw it down low to right. Looked like he was held, didn't even attempt to move, and it was, goes out of bounds. Coach Lepp not happy about it, but it's going back the opposite direction. And I have to agree with him on that one. It looked like a little bit of a hold, but on a game like this, anything is possible. Anything can happen. You have to be ready for it. You can't play for a whistle. I think that's what Coach Lepp is trying to tell them. Hey, let's not play for the whistle. Let's play through the whistle. And I think so far in the first half we've seen that, and we've seen it in glimpse. 
here in the second. Still a pretty good, comfortable lead, though, however, as they throw it back out to Elledge. Elledge from downtown knocks down another. Six-point swing right there for Haskell. Gets them back to within 10. And this is exactly what I was talking about, ladies and gentlemen. 20-point game just about three minutes ago. Now, all of a sudden, it's down to 10. 44-34, making this game interesting, Haskell is, that's for sure. Porter trying to answer from downtown, no halfway down, no, but Romine count the basket and the foul as we're going to have a three-point play the old-fashioned way. Romine going to go to the line for an and one opportunity. LaPointe trying to plead his case. It's not going to matter. It's not even going to go on him anyway. It's going to go on her many horses as he picks up his second personal team's 10th. Links now in the double bonus, but Romine cannot hit a free throw. And that's a couple that this Lynx team has missed down the stretch. 46-34. It's actually what saved them in the game against Haskell the last time as Hermione Horses has it poked away by Porter, but then we're going to have a foul going against Porter as he tried to reach behind the back. But like I mentioned, though, in that last game these two teams met, it was Haskell who went 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Didn't even make a free throw. Only got there twice, and that was Hendricks. Settled for a lot of jump shots in that contest. Your Lynx got to the line 9 for 16. So they got there 16 times, made 9 of them. And that's what you want to see a little bit better, at least if you can't make some shots. Both teams didn't shoot great in that game, but you can see if you're not going to shoot great, you need to get to the line, get yourself some points, find a rhythm of some sort. And the Lynx did that better than Haskell did, and you're seeing that again here today. At least Haskell's making them make their free throws and keeping this game close. This comes down to the stretch. Those last couple misses there by the Lynx could be huge. Hendricks does check back in here with 8.45 to go with four fouls. So he does have to be careful. And like I mentioned, he's the tallest player and probably the biggest player Haskell has defensively to go up to get rebounds. Like that right there, almost knocked down Romine. Because that one was tipped out of bounds. It'll go to, they're going to say it goes to Haskell. At last touch by the Lynx, by Romine or Tyler. Thought maybe Hendricks got a piece of that, but... They do say, quick, that it was Haskell basketball. So look for them to kind of play through Hendricks here in the final eight minutes. They give it to him right there off the inbounds. Back out to Kitai, who's made a couple big threes, along with Elledge. LaPointe's got one as well. He's got two, actually. He had the first two. Kind of started the scoring option. Now, now Kitai with the little step back right at the free throw line, and he knocks it down. Kitai starting to heat up here down the stretch as well. 46-37, another defensive battle that we thought was going to be a great scoring game in the first half, but since then it has cooled down tremendously. Junior now with it, guarded very closely by Hermony Horses, trying to find some space, drives, kicks it to the corner for right, but throws it away. All of a sudden, Haskell, a little spark of life down the stretch, and it is timeout, Coach Lepp, as he does not like what he sees out on the hardwood right now. 46-37, and it has been a great game back and forth. Real quick here, we'll stay, stay right here and have a... a you know, have a nice little chat. But like I mentioned, we'll get to, I want to talk a little bit about Haskell's head coach, Matthew Downing Jr. Talked to him a little bit before about the game, but he's in his fifth season as the head coach here for Haskell. And like I said, he's coached all over from, you know, junior high to elementary to the college level. So he's coached all over. But really the big thing is that really sh shocked me and my person, which made me respect the guy a lot more is, not only does the guy know what he's doing, but he definitely knows how to win and knows how to, to act and mature and, and be, you know, a, a leader for a basketball team. So kudos to him for that as well. But, again, like I mentioned, he knows he knows talent. He told me that it's all about how you recruit. It's, it's not about the players that you get. Because I, I asked him, how do you get players to come to Haskell? And he said it's all about recruiting. you got to figure out a way to recruit. He's been in the Lawrence. Uh, Lawrence, Kansas area for 20 plus years training and developing basketball players and he, you guys might know this guy but uh, Sime Ojile who went to Kansas was the best high school player in the state of Kansas. He played at Kansas. Like I mentioned he was the all-time leading scorer in Kansas high school basketball history. He, he, helped, he helped train him who is now Simi is playing in the NBA for the Boston Celtics. So Coach Matthew Downing Jr. knows what he's talking about when it comes to the game of basketball for sure as he's had, he's had that experience as well. He's had players go to the NBA. He also, for you Illini fans, I know Illinois is doing a great job in men's basketball right now with Brad Underwood being their head coach and all, but he actually, Matthew Downing Jr. actually played for Brad Underwood when he was a head coach 
in junior college for Dodge City over in Kansas. He actually played for Brad Underwood, and I asked him, I said, hey, you know, Illinois is doing really well right now with Brad Underwood as their new head coach. What, are you taking anything that, you know, are you doing the same type of plays, and, you know, are you running the same type of, you know, mindset, sequences and stuff as they get down low to Hendricks right there, good spin move towards the baseline, and lays it back up and in, 46-39, and he said, yeah, there's a few X's and O's that we kind of take a page out of Brad Underwood's book because he's a great coach. But other than that, no, I run my own stuff. So you can see he's he takes D1 level type type of coaching, and he also played for Gary Williams, who is the leading, who is now the head coach at Maryland in the Big Ten, who is leading the conference as well. So this the, this guy knows his basketball, that's for sure. As Keith I comes up with a steal right there, and then is fouled on the other end. Here comes Haskell. Down the stretch, they're starting to get loud. Ellich looking at the crowd as well, telling them, hey, don't count us out yet. And like I mentioned, I told you not to count out Haskell at the beginning of this ball game. They play hard, regardless of what the score is. And I, you know, speaking of Brad Underwood, I was watching a, an Illini game. I think it was the Penn State game when they beat Penn State. The reporter told him a, a fun fact that said, you know, Illinois hasn't won a, a ranked road game in you know, so many years or whatever. And then Fox Sports showed Brad Underwood going into the locker room and kind of like, you know, get them all hyped up and stuff. And he said the exact same thing. He stole what that reporter said to him. And he goes, wow, I didn't know that, and then told his team. So, yes, we do have some sort of advantages up here, and the coaches do kind of look for us for information at times as well. And I'm sure when I told Matthew Downing Jr. that the LCU came back from down 20 to 2, he probably went in there and told his guys, hey, this game's far from over. We know how to fight. These guys came back. They just won the day against the one seed. But Romine going to say, hey, this is still my house and my rules as he puts it up and in off the glass, 48-41. So you know this game's going to be far from over. We'll see what Coach Lepp has in store here now. Under seven to go, 48-41. Elledge now with it as Haskell is just chipping away. He sees the lane, drives right to the rack, and finishes this time right around Montez Crumble. Links look a little deflated out there. I don't know if it, we just had a timeout. Might be time for another one. This time we're going to have a foul. Tyler was fouled going, driving towards the rack. As Hermany Horses is going to pick that one up. That's his now third. And that'll send Trayvon Tyler to the line for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And now it seems like Montez Crummel was standing inside the lane. It's supposed to be every other every other one. Can't be standing next to Romine as Tyler's first free throw. No good. And this is exactly what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Need to have, need to have some sort of shot selection down the line. And now we're going to have, I believe, a warning of some sort. I or a lane violation, I guess a lane violation down the stretch. So Tyler's going to get two more opportunities here from the free throw line as he cashes in the first one right there. So he gets to redo that first miss, which could be huge for this Lynx team as he knocked it down. Can he make the second one and capitalize? Yes, he can as he knocks down a pair. All of a sudden, it's back to seven. 50-43 with... Six and a half minutes to go. Ellich wants a screen, doesn't use it though, drives baseline, give it up to Hermione Horses. Now to LaPointe, to Keith I, all alone from downtown from top of the key. No, hits the, the back of the rim. Ball's loose on the floor. Romine just trying to get it out of the way. And said they get back to Keith I, he'll try again. No. Tyler with the rebound, and now we're going to have a foul 90 feet away from the basket as Tyler going to go back to the free throw line for a one and one. Again, and that one does go on Hendricks. That's his fifth. And that is huge for this Lynx team, the best player that Haskell has, overall player defensively and offensively, is now done. He has five fouls on a little, little bit of a bump down the stretch. It wasn't much, but it was called. And that's the way his night is going to end. And if they can't come back, that'll be the way his season ends as well. Very tough breaking loss there for Hendricks, who has been a phenomenal player here for Coach Downing Jr.'s squad. They're still down by seven, though. A lot of work to do. 50-43, six minutes to go 
And again, they will have to take Hendricks out of the ball game. I believe it was Littlehead who came back in. So now the real question is, is the size differential that it's going to favor your links down the stretch because Hendricks is no longer in the game. Just so you, they don't have size listings on here, but I would imagine that Hendricks is around 6'8", six, 6'9", six, at least 6'7", somewhere in that area. A lot taller than me, that's for sure. And, you know, Romine's probably 6'7", somewhere in that area. I mean, right somewhere in that area, 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, I mean, there's nobody else on Haskell that even probably comes close to maybe 6'5", maybe 6'6", six, six, but definitely not the way it is. But Elledge with a big three right there. He's starting to heat up here in this second half for Haskell, and he's helping them crawl their way back into it. It's the closest they've been since the start of the ball game as it's now a four-point game. Remember, it was a 5-0 run to start the game, and then it turned into a 13-0 run as now Junior was fouled in the act of shooting, so he'll go to the line for two shots. As he knocks down the first right there, that one goes on Hermany Horses, his fourth, and team in the double bonus already. As Junior will knock down a pair, the Link's best free throw shooter comes up clutch when we need him to the most. And once again, it's 52-46. The Link's starting to kind of pull away just a hair, but still not far enough for the way Elledge has been shooting this basketball. Now the bad inbounds pass. LaPointe was looking for Keith Eye as he faked left, tried to go back to the right, but LaPointe thought he was going left and threw it out of bounds. Those are the mistakes that cannot be made if you are Haskell down the stretch of this ball game. You have fought so hard to get back in this game. You cannot afford to give up little possessions like that. And it turns into an easy two on the lay or the alley oop by Trayvon Tyler. Back to an eight point lead. 54 46, five and a half to go. Win now with it. Guarded by Junior. Once a screen, goes to the right side of it. Back to LaPointe. Here comes Tyler. He's met. Back over to Elledge. Elledge guarded by Montez Crummel. Trying to back down his man. Elledge now met by Wright. Now they have the mismatch. Elledge trying to drive in, but Junior is there with the help side, but it's not going to matter as Elledge splits both defenders and lays it up and in. 54 48. Five minutes still to go. Far from over. What do the Lynx have in store as an answer? Junior with a jumper from the right elbow. No. Short. Pulled down by Elledge. Met by the hip of Tyler. Elledge now trying to bring it back up the floor. Trying to basically find his shot. Calling for a screen. He gets one. Met by Romine. Double team. Almost had it stolen away by Junior. He gets it to Littlehead. Tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with Haskell underneath their own basket, but it was going to be a good look there for Haskell had they been able to capitalize on that. Good, good news for the Lynx as it was tipped and goes out of bounds. Stay with them underneath their own basket. 54-48, four and a half to play. They inbound it to Littlehead. Littlehead hands it to Wynn. Over to the corner in LaPointe. They catch and shoot from downtown. No, but fouled by Tyrone Wright as Wright Gets some good sportsmanship as he gets helped up by Matthew Downing Jr., the head coach of Haskell. Wright trying to close out on the three-point shooter. Ends up closing out too far. He picks up his third, team's ninth for the Lynx. As LaPointe at the line for three golden opportunities. The first one short as the crowd trying to help us out here a little bit. As LaPointe... Just a 61% free throw shooter, 13 for 22 on the season. Knocks down the second one as well. So he's missed one, made one. Can he go two of three? It would be huge here for Haskell to cut it back to a four-point game. And he does, 54-50 with four and a half minutes still to play. We knew this game was going to be a defensive battle. We thought it was going to be over 58 points scored, and there's still time for that. But the way this game has been, I would be shocked. Somebody that hits 65 first might win. As that one, Romine down low was fouled in the act of shooting. So he now will go to the line for two shots. I think that one's going to go on LaPointe, his second personal. 
So Romine once again back at the line. Romine knocks down the first right there. Make it back to a five-point game. And for Romine, he's three of seven so far from the free throw line today. As Tyrone Wright will check out, Latuan Porter, who got the start for Coach Lepp back in the ball game. And the second one in as well, so he drops them both from the line. 56-50 here as the Lynx trying to hang on by a thread. A new free throws were going to be close down the stretch. Your Lynx shooting 50% from the line. Haskell 76% from the line. LaPointe thought about a three hat, little head open in the corner, said drives, puts one up off the glass, no. Stuffed by the rim, ball still loose on the floor, into the hands of Romine. Now Tyler with it, as he will try to set up the offense here and slow the pace down. I do think that's also one problem this Lynx team has. They try to slow it down and, you know, and play the clock and play to their advantage, but I really don't think that's their thing. It, the Lynx play much better when they play more up-tempo type of offense instead of trying to waste time. As now Crumble count the basket and the foul. Montez Crumble from the right side corner has a four-point play opportunity as he makes the three fouled by LaPointe. Trying to close out, he'll go to the line for an and one with an old-fashioned four-point play. Montez Crumble, have yourself a game, son. Crumble 10 points on the night, make it now 13 with an opportunity for 14 right here. And for Keytide, that's his fifth personal. So his night is now done, and you can feel it starting to kind of feel it now a little bit as it's back up by nine, could be 10. As Elledge kind of giving a look to the crowd, trying to say, yeah, man. Hey, this game's still not over, and he's right. It's still not over, but I wouldn't get too confident yet. That's not something you want to do with this Lynx team. Lynx team seem to play better when it's that way as Tyler trying to close him out. Tyler now going to be on Elledge, the best defensive player we got. Montez Crumble now on win, and we're going to have a timeout taken here by Matthew Downing Jr., a full timeout. Ten-point lead once again for the Lynx. He's got this crowd backfired up. Can they hang on in the final three and a half minutes? We will find out when we come back on LCTV. The State Bank of Lincoln is Lincoln's oldest bank. Its home location at 508 Broadway dates back over 100 years. That's 100 years of providing Lincoln and surrounding area residents and businesses with banking services including savings and checking accounts, personal business and agricultural loans, and retirement planning. The State Bank of Lincoln, since 1903, assisting and strengthening both individuals and the local community. We're back inside the Jack D. Nutt Arena where it is now a 10-point ball game with just about three and a half minutes left to be played in this contest. And it has been a dogfight left and right, back and forth, as this has been an absolute show here from both sides. It is a win or go home type of ball game playing for their national playoff lives and the Lynx have definitely responded well in this ball game. I know, I, I will admit it, I was nervous coming into this game knowing that our first game was against Haskell. Not because we were playing Haskell, but just because of the fact that how Haskell plays. They play so aggressively, they play so hard basketball, they don't, they don't ever give up. You know, you can get up by 20, and then a team just kind of mentally is checked out. They already know that the game's over. Not Haskell. Haskell doesn't do that. They think they're in the ball game, whether they're down 20 or up 20, and that's what you have to respect most about this team. Down, They were down by 21 early in this second half. Now all of a sudden down 10. They had it to four at one point. The question is, can they battle back? Still three and a half minutes to go. The only problem is, is two of their best players have fouled out. The only one left really here is Hendr or is Elledge, who leads the team in scoring with 16 points a game, but he has it poked away. He comes up hobbling a little bit. Tyler with the steal. Outlet now to right. Give and go with him, and he lays it up and in. Then Porter, good sportsmanship, picks right back up to get him back down the other end of the floor. Now Porter uh, got crossed up there just a tad bit. Where we'll leave it at that. Elledge still shaking up though as Wynn trying to drive in. Left side lane, no tip back out by Romine. Into the hands of Junior. 12 point lead as the Lynx trying to go quickly here. 62 50. And Elledge had the hot hand, but he, like you can see right there, he's limping just a little bit. 
Not going to be able to stay with Darnell Latham. Junior, junior try, decides to try to drive. Now there's the body foul right there. Junior saw that he was hobbling just a tad and trying to make him use that ankle. Okay, I don't know which one it is. It's, I think it's the left one, but he's come up grimacing just a little bit. And he, he's going to play through it, stay in the ball game because the season is on the line. But Junior add the line to shoot two free throws. Knocks down the first right there as Elledge will pick up his third personal. Here comes Aroke into the game for her many horses. Montez Crummel back in as well. Tyrone Wright checks out. And the, the Lynx have done their part so far. They could probably take a, away from this game, shooting the free throws a little bit better. But other than that, they are still in control. Like I said, might be the first one to 65 first. And so far, Lynx two points away from that. Might be it right here as Tyler comes up with the steal. Going coast to coast, lays it up and in. And it's going to be a timeout taken. Coach Lepp, full timeout as he wants to set up the defense here in the final two and a half minutes to kind of set the tone and hopefully play for a spot in the conference tournament championship tomorrow night. 65-50 as we're going to take another media timeout. Don't go anywhere. The Lynx looking good right here on LCTV. ME Realty in Lincoln brings home buyers and sellers together in Logan County and the surrounding area. ME Realty is now at a new location at 602 Keokuk in Lincoln. Call them at 217-735-5424 or online at sethsellslincoln.com. See all of their latest home listings at any time. M.E. Realty, proud to be involved in the Lincoln community. Welcome back inside the Jack Dean Nutt Arena where it's 65-50 lead here for your Lynx with just 2.15 to go. And we knew this was going to be a dogfight. Unfortunately for Haskell, they have not sustained the fight that has been given to them. They cannot keep up. The Lynx have kind of rolled away with it. And like I mentioned, credit Haskell. They have done everything that they've asked them to do down the stretch that did not go their way. Sometimes that happens. Bad breaks can happen. You know, Hen Hendricks fouled out. Kitai has fouled out. Elledge on the last possession came up hobbling after he had it stolen away from him. So, I mean, just deflated. I mean, every opportunity that they have, it just seems like it gets shut down, whether it's an injury, whether it's somebody fouling out. Well, you know, I mean, somebody else has to step up now for the for Haskell. Can it be LaPointe? He's got a couple threes on the night. Little head as well, but they can't do that when they threw that one out of bounds right in front of Matthew Downing Jr. And it's like they're going to give the ball back to this Lynx team, and that's not what you want to have happen if you're Haskell. These, against a team like the Lynx, you have to capitalize on every single opportunity as they throw it inbound to Tyler, and Tyler has just ran over by Elledge. And he comes up limping. Now Tyler is hurt on the play. And this is not good, ladies and gentlemen. Tyler has not gotten up. And I know this, this is big for the Lynx. Right here, the best overall player laying on the floor. As Elledge right there standing over him. Here's a last look at it. You can see Tyler just driving right there. But you can see Elledge was trying to come up for the ball. And they basically just collided. Tyler never saw him coming. But he does get up. Comes up hobbling just a little bit as well. Holding that left knee. And that is, like I mentioned, not what you want to see if you're a Lynx fan. Trayvon Tyler is the heart and soul of this Lynx team. Also the leader of this Lynx team. I don't want to say Coach Lepp's favorite because Lepp likes them all. But definitely up there with... Trayvon and Lepp, they do have a very good close relationship. So you know Coach Lepp is a little bummed to see that too. You could see him standing there looking at him, hoping that he was going to get up. And Tyler knocks down a, both of them, 67-50. And Haskell needs to get a basket here very quickly. Been held scoreless here for the final couple minutes. Need to get back on the scoring column. Win with a step back three. No, off the back of the iron. Littlehead trying to tip it out to himself instead it goes to Junior. Outlet now to Tyler, and Tyler simply just puts it up and in. Not trying to overdo it here as Elledge now with it. Double teamed by Tyler as he'll get it to LaPointe. Catch and shoot from the corner, no. Elledge trying to tip it into the hands of Montez Crumble. He has it poked away, but then Crumble 
Regains it, now all they gotta do is really just get it across half court, they will. Minute 30 to go, 19 point lead here for the Lynx and I think they can start to take a little bit of a deep breath now as Romine goes for it, goes for the slam. It's a baby slam, but it's enough to get it done as if you wanna say that sent the message, it definitely did enough to say, hey, this ball game might be over. And it's going to be a substitutional timeout. As starting to, I believe, chant, you know, sing the song goodbye to somebody. I don't know exactly what they're doing. Nobody picked up the, a fifth personal foul. Nobody fouled out. It was just a substitutional timeout. I don't, I didn't really know what was going on there, but now Haskell's going to send in the, the remains for them, give them a chance, as well as uh, Justin Curley checked in. I saw uh, Ruben uh, Lasarge checked in. Albert Dean is in. Oroke is in. Robert uh, Bilelu is in as well. And Haskell, you can see the starters getting some hugs there from their bench, knowing that they did a, a heck of a job. I mean, they battled back a five-game winning streak to cap off the regular season to get back over 500 to get for the most wins in school history for the first time. Get to the conference tournament here once again, but unfortunately for them, it results in the same effort that they could not win that first game of the conference tournament. I mean, they ran into a tough team. I mean, this is a Lynx team. Yes, we're 17 and 13. However, though, we are capable of playing like a 23 and 7 team like Washington Advantis. I mean, we are, we have that type of firepower and authority. I'm not saying Haskell doesn't, because they do. I think Hendricks is an outstanding player along with Kitai as well. And I mentioned it last year, assistant coach Brown took Julian Powell, our player that's in the G Leagues, to school and took him to town and they won by one because of that. So, I mean, I get it. It's, it's, it's tough. It's tough to end your season this way, especially the, due to the fact that it was a 21 point lead early in the second half, you got it back all the way down to four. I thought that they possibly could have took the lead, but they just, every opportunity that they had, they just couldn't capitalize on it. You saw where they'd get, turn the links over, and force a turnover, and then all of a sudden throw it out of bounds on their own. Those are the things you can't have happen in, in a conference game. Maybe in the regular season you can get by with some of those. In a conference game, like I mentioned, everything matters. So you have to be precise. Every offense and defensive possession does matter. You have to make sure you can take take charge with it as we're under a minute to play. 20-point game as Ukebu trying to go for a two-handed slam. But he is fouled hard as he tries to hang on the rim to make sure he doesn't foul anybody. But I think he was trying to make a little bit of a statement right there. As Ukebu now going to go to the line for two shots. Ukebu can get up as Ukebu, a two-way player here for, or two-way athlete. Here at Lincoln College, also plays soccer for Coach Messina's team. And they had a great outstanding year as well. I'm sure not the way Messina would like it to have happen, but a good year in the NAI. They took the one seed in their conference tournament down to the wire. I believe they lost on penalty kicks down the stretch. So that's a hard way to lose on a, on a game and, a, and a, to a team that they've had for years, that they've been very good in junior college play, but that one comes up the steal. Now Martin with it. He's going to fly high and slam it home. Winslow Martin with a high flying slam right there. Now all of a sudden just a couple points away from that 1,000 points career. As Winslow Martin with a big, Slam right there, and if you didn't think you Kabu's or Romines was bad enough, Winslow Martin says, how about this? As he throws it down with authority, 74-51. Five seconds left to go. Haskell just looks like they're going to hold it. As they will back it out, and that will do it. 74-51 is your final, and your Lynx move on to see another day as they win. Here, 74-51 over Haskell Indians Nation, the three or the sixth seed here in the AII Conference Tournament and what we thought was going to be a very dangerous and nerve-wracking game after we watched the first two, the top two seeds go and be go down and be upset. We thought, oh man, is the link are the links gonna be able to hang on? And sure enough, they did a great run at the start of the game to get them out in front early and they never looked back. Was it close? Yes. However, though, they did do their part. 
And like I said, they improve once again now to 18 and 13 on the season. And they will play tomorrow against the winner of Vor or against Crowley's Ridge, the seventh seed who took down the two seed for a game to send and a date to send them to the conference title game. That old game will be at three o'clock, give or take the way we were running late last time. We were running late today. So we'll see what happens again. 74-51 is your final here in this one. We will see you tomorrow afternoon for another big stretch of games. Again, don't go anywhere. We will have the Lady Lynx game taking on Voorhees in a two versus seven seed coming up next in about 10 minutes right here on LCTV. Thanks to the entire LCTV staff. I'm Nick Jackson, and we will see you soon.